Hey, what's up? My name's JMJ Lee, and welcome to my channel. This week, I'm doing a creature spotlight, but I'm actually doing something I've never done before, which is a redo of a creature spotlight that I've already done. Why is that? Um, two reasons. One, this is a redo of the first creature spotlight I ever did a year or so ago. I forget exactly how long ago, but it was for sirens. Sirens are some of my most favorite uh, supernatural creatures, beings out there. And within the vein of the Creature Spotlight series that I have, uh, they fall into the underrepresented category and the represented wrong category. One kind of uh, infiltrates the other, I think. We're going to get to that in a moment. But the second reason that I want to do a redo is because since this was my first Creature Spotlight, it was with my old setup. I had an old, an older camera, uh, older mic, and the quality, the lighting, like everything was just really bad. And I, it was my first Creature Spotlight, and it was one of my favorite Creature Spotlights because of who it was about. Now, I've been thinking about doing a Creature Spotlight redo on this one for a while because I have introduced Sirens in my own fantasy fiction writing. I've introduced them in the Vampires of 1863, well, one. I introduced one in the Vampires of 1863, and I introduced one in a short story I did for the anthology Realm of Enchantments. And there is a siren in each one of those. So I had to really start thinking about what sirens were and what they were not. And I'm just going to come right out of the gate and say they were not mermaids. They weren't mermaids. Uh, they aren't mermaids, and a lot of times we see sirens depicted with fish tails. Those are mermaids. You know, there's mermaids, and then there's sirens, and they're not the same. They're different. You know, it's kind of like saying a pegasus is one thing and a unicorn is another. No, it's not even that. It's like saying a pegasus is one thing and a satyr is another thing. <laughs> they're just very different, you know? Sirens, historically, have been depicted with wings. They're more bird-like than fish. They're not fish at all. They're, they're more bird-like than anything else. Check out this sculpture from the first century. You can see the siren has wings, you know, humanoid features for sure, bird-like feet. This was seen for hundreds of years in sculptures of sirens. Throughout the fourth century, we have more examples. This one is from 375. AD. This one is from later on in the 4th century. Lots of examples of this stuff. Birds, wings, feathers, bird feet instead of like regular human feet. That's what a siren was. And somewhere along the line, we lost that. And I think that has to do with the fact that they were marooned on an island surrounded by an ocean. And we're going to get to that in a moment. The first thing we need to talk about with the sirens is sort of how their story began, where, where they come from, who they were, and what their role was in Greek mythology. Now, I did a video on Greek mythology a while back. I'll put the link up here. But one of the things I pointed out was there's a lot of um, contradictions between the stories, depending on which ones you're following, which ones you're reading. Sometimes they conflict with one another. Um, sirens is another example of that. So this goes back to the story of Persephone. Now, if you know the story of Persephone, she was off with her mother and she was picking flowers. And long story short, Hades came up, thought she was cute, grabbed her and took her back to the underworld, right? Demeter, very sad, that whole story. In one version of the story, Persephone was being guarded by the Oceanids. And the Oceanids are kind of like sea nymphs. There were tens of thousands of them. Um, and they were sort of like a handful of them were her handmaidens or guardians or something like that. In another version, my personal favorite version, because why have a bunch of random Oceanids who live in the ocean guard the daughter of, you know, Demeter. In the other version, they were sirens. 
the seven sirens were guarding um, Persephone, keeping an, eye, keeping an eye on it. Here's another, by the way, there's another contradiction of Greek mythology. Some, uh, some tales say that there were five sirens, some say there were seven. We actually have names for all seven sirens. We'll get to those. But as the story goes, the sirens were keeping an eye on her. Persephone slipped away, looking at the flower. Hades came, grabbed them. So Demeter, of course, is pissed off. She's angry. She's sad. She's heartbroken. And, you know, who does she go to among the many people that she's, you know, crying to? Her sister, Hera. So Hera, being the oh-so-helpful goddess that she always is, um, decides that she's going to punish the sirens for their inability to keep a good eye on Persephone. So what does she do? She arranges a singing contest between the sirens and the muses. And if you know the muses, they're nine muses. They represent all the different arts, poetry, singing, uh, theater, right? All this kind of stuff versus the sirens. And they're all great singers, all of them. Now, the story doesn't really go into a lot of detail, whether it was rigged or not, or if the muses really did win, or who knows what. I couldn't find anything that really talked about the actual contest. I could only find the result of the contest, which was that the muses won. And when the muses won, they plucked the feathers from the sirens and made crowns of them as in victory. Uh, leaving them, you know, without any feathers or anything like that. And Hera banished the sirens to this island in the middle of the ocean. Here's where you get the sirens in the ocean trope, right? But think about it. They didn't have fishtails. <laughs> if they could, if they did, they'd just swim away and go, <laughs> we're not stranded anymore. See ya. And they didn't have their wings anymore. They couldn't fly. Their feathers were plucked from them. They were marooned on the island. That was the whole point. They were trapped on the island. They couldn't leave. I guess their feathers didn't grow back. Or maybe the uh, feathers, the removal of feathers was a symbolic uh, representation that their wings were removed. Their ability to fly was taken from them. I don't know. That's speculation. I don't know. But they were stranded on that island. Now we get the other stories of the sirens that we know, that I think are, are more popular. Jason and the Argonauts came to the island. And they were already legends of the sirens singing that would bring the boats in and crash on the rocks, right? Now Jason had Orpheus with a, with a, with a lyre, and he was basically outplaying them. He had this magical lyre, and he was basically playing and drowning out the siren song and protecting them. Then you had Odysseus. He was the next, this was like a generation later, along comes Od Odysseus. He wants to hear the song. He knows that it's dangerous, but he wants to hear the music. The rest of the crew, I think they put wax in their ears so they couldn't hear anything. But he tells his crew, tie me to the mast of this ship. And no matter what I say, no matter how much I beg you and order you and plead for you to do this, do not untie me until we're free of the sirens. I want to hear their beautiful music. So they tie him to the mast of the ship. The rest of the crew, wax in the ears, they can't hear anything. And they sail past the, the, the island. And Odysseus can hear the song. And he's like, bring me to them. You know, I want to be there. I want to go where the music is. And of course, they're ignoring him as they were ordered. And, you know their boat does not get destroyed. And we have uh, examples of the Odyssey, right? With this mosaic for one, you can see uh, Odysseus is, is tied to the mast of his ship. And But look at the sirens and how they're depicted. They're birds. Now, even though they're supposed to be trapped on the island, maybe they don't fly far, I don't know, but they're still birds. Now, I did mention that there are seven sirens and I have their names. I wanna give you their names in case you wanna know what their names are, why not? I have to read them off here because these are um, Greek names and I can't pronounce them very well. So I've written kind of a pronunciation guide for each one. 
um, in no particular order because unlike the muses, all nine muses are named, but every single muse is, re is, is a, rep a representation of different arts, right? Uh, sirens, not so much. They're just seven beautiful singers. <laughs> Aliope is one of them. Ligeia is another. Now, Ligeia, um, if you know, if you have read The Vampires of 1863, I'll give you a little nugget here. Ligeia is her mother. Um, the mother of the siren that's in The Vampires of 1863. Molpi. Molpi is another siren. She appears in the story I wrote, uh, the short story I wrote for Realm of Enchantments. You get to see Molpi. P.A. Sinoe. That was a hard one to pronounce. I had to write that one down. P.A. Sinoe. Thaloxope is another. Now those are the five surviving sirens, according to Greek mythology. In the tales of the sirens, uh, two of them perished um, at, on the island. The first one, um, Parthenope, she... I don't know how she died. I couldn't find any, any story about how she, she passed away. But she was put in a, in a coffin and been pushed out to sea. And she um, washed ashore and they found her. Um, and the last one uh, is Lucosia. Lucosia is who my siren ca character in 1863 was named after. She was named after her aunt Lucosia, who killed herself. Um, she threw herself into the sea as she was uh, distraught over her isolation and being stranded and um, tragic, right? So five sirens remain on the island, um, two perished. I mean, that may be where the schism comes from of how many sirens there are, seven or five, because there are five surviving sirens, uh, according to Greek mythology. And again, uh, if they're mermaids, throwing yourself into the sea isn't going to do anything. <laughs> the stories are there. Um, we've, we've uh, over the years, we've ignored the actual myths, the actual carvings and the representations and pictures that we have of sirens. And we put fishtails on them for some reason. But sometime in the Middle Ages, the stories of mermaids began to gain prominence. And they had similar stuff. They would sing and lure sailors and they'd crash on the rocks. They're not sirens, but they have a very similar sort of MO. And I think sometime maybe during the 1400s or earlier, these two mythologies sort of bled into one another. And pretty soon we started getting pictures of sirens with fishtails on them. Here's uh, an example from the 1800s, 1891. Uh, here's an example from 1909. So we can see how things changed within a matter of uh, a thousand years. You know, it's a long time. But no one's really gone back to the basics and said, well, no, sirens have wings. Or maybe they had wings and they got them ripped off after the contest or whatever. When we see sirens in fantasy fiction, typically they've got mermaid tails. You know, and that's why I wanted to do this creature spotlight, because, yeah, we get a lot of sirens in fantasy fiction. We really do. Um, but they're not depicted as sirens ought to be. They're not depicted as sirens. They're depicted as mermaids. And there's this bleed, bleed through, you know? And uh, I think sirens are cool enough on their own that they don't need to piggyback on the coolness of mermaids. Nothing against mermaids. Mermaids are cool. It's just that mermaids are here, sirens are there, and they're different critters. But that's just another example of how the, the sirens kind of got a raw deal. You know, not only <laughs> has their legacy been co-opted by another creature, uh, leaving them to sort of be forgotten for what they were and who they were, but the, even the name Siren has been applied to something 
horrendous, right? The, an alarm, a, a high pitched squealing shrill alarm. That is the legacy of the siren. When you say the word siren, you're not thinking of a beautiful honeyed voiced woman, right? You're thinking of, you know, it's the, uh, but as opposed to the muses who are arguably the villain in this story, we get the word music, right? They get all the credit for this is where music comes from. And the sirens are probably thinking, we sing too. Why couldn't we have that legacy? <laughs> because the siren that we think of today was actually invented in 1799 uh, by John Robinson. And it was created as a musical device with uh, to use with pipe organs. That would have been fitting, you know? Music, that's sirens, music, perfect. But in 1819, Baron Charles uh, Con Conquer de la, de la Tour, I'm gonna butcher his name and I'm sorry, uh, made the version that we know today, which was to use the siren as an alarm. And this is what kills me back then. I mean, this painting was only just done in that time period, 1819, we knew what sirens were. We knew the story. People were talking about them and he thought it was a good idea name his alarm a siren. What did he think siren sounded like? <laughs> So while muses become music, sirens become sirens. So that about wraps it up. Sirens, if you have sirens in fantasy fiction, consider making them sirens and not mermaids. Just saying. Uh, and if you're looking for siren fantasy fiction, you find some actual siren fantasy fiction, let me know because I am, I'm down for some. I, I'm, you know, every time I'm like, oh, a siren. And I, you know, I, I watch the show or the movie or read the book and it's a lady with a fishtail. And I'm like, yeah, you know, hey, Little Mermaid was just fine. Ariel, nothing against Ariel. Ariel's not a siren. Mermaids can sing too, right? Sirens don't own right? The rights to sing. <laughs> All right. So if you like this video, please smoosh that like button. And as always, please subscribe. I post most Thursdays and you can follow me on a plethora of social media outlets. All the links are in the description. I am most active on Blue Sky X and Facebook these days. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.